Hey, what's happening, everybody? Kevin Allen is here. And yeah, I wanted to do a quick video today, uh, giving you guys a little glimpse into what I would consider my most used music app and definitely the one that I've used for the longest. When I first got into making music on my iPad a few years ago, uh, one of the apps that kind of caught my attention was an app called Korg Gadget. And uh, I'm going to talk in this video about the second app, which is called Korg Gadget 2 that came out maybe, man, I don't even know how many years after the first one. I would say several years. Um, but Korg Gadget 2 is the one that I've been using a lot lately. And I just wanted to give an overview of the app. I've been wanting to make this video for a while and uh, actually happened to wake up this morning and saw that there was a, a small update. Or I shouldn't even say small, pretty sizable, I think, update to some of the Korg apps. And I said, you know what, I think it's time to, you know, incorporate some of those changes even uh, into this video. So this is just going to be an overview video uh, of the app. And for people that may have been interested in it or are looking to get into iOS music making, um, it's a highly recommended app. It's definitely not for everyone. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what some of the like features are or the workflow of this app that uh, make it something that a I wouldn't say a lot, but that some people that I've seen online uh, really couldn't get into. And that's fine. But that same reason is part of the reason why I love it. And I just think that, you know, everyone has their own specific, unique ways of making music and what works for them. And, uh, you know, this is mine. So when you launch Korg Gadget 2, as you can see, this top left button here, when you click on new, the first thing that I like about Core Gadget is it immediately gives you two random words, or from what I understand, I think they're random, uh, that that they're going to say, oh, this is going to be the, the name of your track that you're working on. And of course, you can just click right in here and change the name if you wanted to something else. And you can put, you know, Kevin's Beat, whatever. Or you could, if you don't like the name that they give you, you can hit this refresh button here. And it'll just give you a new a new name. Why I love this so much is because when I launch a new project, it's always going to just be called Untitled. And I'm working on it. I'm making something. And something that I not struggle with or something that I, I just I'm not as good at is like coming up with the name on the spot. And so this gives me a chance to just have something. And then I'm just like, oh, Silver Security. Okay. Or even sometimes that can give you like a little idea or a glimpse into what type of track you want to start making if you're just kind of going into a session you know creatively just looking to do do whatever so that's the first thing that i like about this and then of course you can always change the name later so say for like okay silver security i like that let's call it that so you hit okay and then you're met with this screen these are all of the gadgets and each of these gadgets are, are different sound engines essentially um, some of them are drums some of them are synths, some of them are more acoustic sounds, a lot of electronic stuff, some are samplers, some are pad sounds. There's like a whole lot of stuff here. And when you when you purchase the app, uh, they give you a handful, they give you several of these app, of these uh, gadgets that are included. And then if you, as you want to expand, like some of you can purchase some of them like 10 bucks or 15 bucks and stuff like that. And so I have bought quite a few of these actually over the years. And um, I have a lot. I have a lot of sound um, capability, you know, just just with with what I have here so far. So say if we're like, okay, let's go, and you can click any of these top buttons here too. So like the synth button, this will bring you all the synths that you might care about. And let's see, this drum one gives you all the drum machines. This is pretty cool to have it be able to filter out like this, right? I don't even really use the filtering aspect of it. The keyboard sounds. Pretty cool audio tracks for voice recording and stuff like that. MIDI out um, for MIDI out capabilities. I should also mention that all of these, the, t the names of all of these are, are, are places. Montreal, Miami, Brussels, Dublin, Helsinki, Vancouver. Pretty cool, you know, sort of thing that I think they have going on there. I don't know where all these places are. Kingston, London, right? Chicago. Do they have a New York here? I don't think they have a New York. Come on, how did they not have New York? It's the most famous city in the world. They have something that kind of looks like my name, Kiev. I think that's in Russia, I think, or something. I don't know. I think so. Somewhere in Europe. All right, so say if we want to start with drums, right? So I'm going to hit this uh, recife, I think it's pronounced, and not recife. I saw someone pronounce it that way on one of their videos. Um, 
I always pronounce it Recife too though. So anyway, so you click it and now on this screen, you can click up here to make this bottom section larger, which actually turns into a mixer. For now, I'm gonna leave it this way. If I click on the actual icon, it launches Drum Machine. You can double tap to make it full screen, double tap again to make it back to, back to um, you know, this type of screen here. So let's play some of these. So these are drums, as you can see. If we click right up here, we have an area of different drums that we can click on. So say we're like, we want some lo-fi sound going on. So you have that going on over here. You can make any changes that you need. If you want to change the level or the speed, if you want whatever one you're currently clicked on. So let's see, uh, pitch. Right, so you can do all kind of um, maneuvering and uh, tweaking of the sounds over here, which is really nice. And then down at the bottom here, you can change your tempo, you can change, add metronome, remove metronome, and you can add swing too, which I've actually never used. I wonder if that's always been here. Part of me feels like it hasn't, because I don't, yeah, I don't think that's always been here. I think that's new. Uh, pretty cool. So you have that, and then you have quantize, quantize off. A little tip for you guys. I've been using quantize for so long, but recently after watching some videos and experimenting, I've been doing some stuff without quantize uh, turned on, and that's been changing just the sound of stuff a, a little less robotic, and I'm kind of enjoying that. So just a little tip. You might want to try that as well. Solo and mute. So say if we're ready to record, let's go in here. We're going to click tempo. We're going to do something on the fly. Who knows how it's going to come out? Doesn't really matter. Let's hit metronome. I usually like that on. And for drums, for the to start, I'm actually going to leave quantization on for this one here. Let's... All right. So you hit the record button, which is right down here. And then you hit play and it's going to give you a, give you a count in. You can also, let's do two bars. You can also click this little plus in the top right to get two bars. Let's do a little drum loop. So you hit record again. Let's stop. So you hit record again to stop it. And then now I probably would go back into tempo and turn metronome off. Now we have our drum loop going, right? So hit play. All right, so now. That's pretty cool. A little bass hit. So I might bring some of these sounds in here next. Let's see. We don't know what that is, but that's fine. So say if we're like, oh, let's see how that sounds and let's change to a different kit. You can always change on the fly and see how a different kit would sound. So I might like that. So top left, we hit back. Now if we hit this plus, what if we want to bring in some other sounds? So let's see what we want to choose here. Um, How about we go with... Xiang Mai. So we have this. So we click in. And one of the first things is on the keyboard on screen, if I play all these notes, you'll hear that, that that's on a certain scale, right? So if we hit this little button on here on any of the non-drum modules, the synths and the keys, they automatically put you in a specific scale. So if you click that and you're like me and you prefer being able to not be restricted to what keys you want to play. I would like for them to have that so you can leave it by default on chromatic, but they don't have that feature just yet, maybe eventually. So now, so now it has everything there. So we can hit the same thing plus. So, and for this one, let's actually go back in here. Let's actually put this back on, on Dorian. And I forget exactly. I think it was on two. Was it on six? 
I forget. It was something like this, I think. So let's actually hit record and let's just do something. So as you can see, it automatically keeps us at the same length of the bar, which is two that the previous uh, recording session had. So we don't know what this is going to be, but let's see. You have that going and then you're like, okay, let me go back again and let me click on this plus sign at the bottom. Now you may want to put some bass in here. So you can hit this Dublin one and click in here. And now, of course, for people who aren't as musically inclined, we know that the benefit of having of being in scale mode is that you, you could you're kind of forced to play notes that are within the same scale, and it'll you know it's it'll sound good even if you don't don't play by ear and can't kind of figure out a melody that would sound good. So, for example, if I hit play and then start messing around with these notes, because it's in the same scale, it's going to give me that it's going to sound correct rather than just random notes. So let's see. That's just, you know, three things. And then maybe I might want to put some, some pads in here or something. So let's see, maybe I might go to, or maybe like a synth actually. So Lexington. click this top right button to now bring the mixer in that we talked about earlier and let's mix these levels some of these sounds are a little bit too loud um, and over, a little overpowering so let's see <laughs> how you can come up with some musical ideas very very quickly in this app so that's the foundation of something that you know might turn into something right so from here now this is part of the reason that i mentioned earlier that some people don't like this app as much as what they're used to on a on a regular full-fledged DAW is that this is similar to ableton's uh session mode right this is like having different it's not exactly not exactly that either because you can't mix and match stuff yet although i feel like they should allow you to do that maybe eventually they will but what i mean exactly is if i click this button here and i want to start arranging like a full song i can have section a be this but say if i'm like okay i just want two of these parts for section a Right now, I would probably bring in a couple of these rows, and I believe, I believe if I uh, if I hit function, and then I think there's a way to change the name on here. Let me see. Click that. Yeah. Click name, and then I might call this intro. I don't really do this as much, but this is kind of getting a little bit deeper into some of the other aspects. But as you can see, we can call that intro, and then if I wanted to take out drums and maybe take out this sound and maybe even take out this sound. And so this might be my intro. So if I hit function, I can clear this, click it twice. I can clear this, click it twice, clear this, click it twice. Come back here. Let's unmute everything by clicking this solo mute off. Now if I hit play, Keeping, it's continuing on doing that because I have this loop button clicked. If I click loop, hit play again, you'll see that it'll go right to the next section. All 
right? So you see how that does that. Now that's kind of a quick overview of the app. That's I, I don't want to, like I said, go too deep into it. If I click on this function, you can see that there's a lot more stuff you can do here. You can change the size of any of these um, sections of the song. If you click over here, you can change a lot more stuff. You can change the signature, how many times you want that first intro to repeat before going to the next part. You can do that there. Over here, we have uh, scene tempo, so you can actually change this, the tempo of the scene, which is a, somewhat of a new feature before you weren't able to do that. And then, so the other thing that I just want to say that, that I appreciate about this app, there's two more quick things I want to, I want to talk about. One is if I go into something like, um, there's where's the video? This one here, Kamata, I think, or Kamara. Yeah, Kamata. So if I click in here, it's like a video game. And push start. So I can click on here and you could adjust the sound by adjusting this and then the high score thing goes up and it's just a I don't know like a really cool different type of a type of a interface here that you know a lot of attention to detail went into every single one of these gadgets which I think is really really cool I go in here change it so if you wanted to make some some video game music or something that old school like you can do all that right within the app which is i think really incredible you also have uh some sampling type stuff on here which i use a different app for the sampling that i do but there's one called abu dhabi and vancouver so this is abu dhabi right here you can import samples you have to turn arpeggio off i don't know why that arpeggio is on by default and i don't know why a certain effect is on by default, but they have it set that way. Um, sample. So you can sample, you can put your own loops in there. I'm not a big fan of Abu Dhabi personally. I haven't put, in a, put a lot of time into it. It just doesn't seem very intuitive compared to something like Koala Sampler, which is extremely intuitive. So I do my sampling with that app. I mean, if I was able to import that into here or something, that would be... I would probably never leave the studio and just make a ton of stuff. But yeah, for now you have to like import stuff from Koala into here, which is perfectly fine. It's still a way, you know, to do that. And then the last couple things, if you go into settings on the top right, uh, you can connect the MIDI keyboard. That's kind of standard nowadays. Uh, you can do that on here. But then if I go to, um, let's see, if I go to this button up here and you go to export, you could do a lot of different stuff here, right? You can export the stems to Audio Share. You can export this whole thing as an Ableton Live project if you want to continue editing in Ableton uh, or any other DAW, really. I, I believe, actually, no, I think this sets it up automatically as an Ableton file. But if you did the Audio Share, you could then take those stems and put them anywhere else. Anywhere else, it, it creates them as audio files. And then the last thing. If I click on this globe button, there's something called Gadget Cloud, which I've used a decent amount in the past. I haven't used it in a while, though. I uh, probably should start again. But it was, it's a cool way to share your music, and it syncs with SoundCloud, actually. So I think if I click on the bottom right, I think I have some stuff here that I haven't looked at in forever. I haven't even been in here in forever. But these are some of my you know, songs that I... <laughs> pretty cool stuff i haven't listened to these in a while i'm not going to go through all of them but as you can see i have a lot of a decent amount of stuff here but you could easily export ideas to to here and then you could you know share your stuff and get some some feedback on it which i think is pretty nice as well uh so that is core gadget in a nutshell um you can see it's it's just so quick and easy to get stuff started and it's to me it has everything that you need in this sort of con concise package. And I really, really am a big fan of it. One more thing that I wanted to share that I didn't talk about is on this latest update, uh, they have, they gave you, a, they gave a new module here. And I don't know if, I think maybe I read that maybe you need to have had, 
you need to have a, a core module pro which is a separate app and i'll do a video on that soon as well i think i read that that's the case i'm not 100 percent sure i do have that app but this fairbanks down here let's go through a couple of sounds on here i wanted to i was jumping the gun a little bit i wanted to go in here and see what so let's maximize this see what this is looking like <laughs> Just the effects, like the visual look of this, I just love, you know, it's just cool. Like all this stuff going on over here, like some circuitry as an engineer that just caught my eye. Um, and it was also one more thing I wanted to look at too. I'll, I'll check it in a second. See, this is cool. Yeah, this is sounding good. What if I go a different higher octave? Yeah, very cool. And then I think there was one more thing. I think they said Glasgow, Glasgow. This one has a different, uh, I think that's what they said. Uh, let me see. Next. Oh, you can search now. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Powered by Korg module. So if you go all, you have all these sounds in here. This is new, I believe, with this uh, version. Korg pad. Chip tunes. Yeah, pretty cool. Yep, so they did a great job with the app. Um, I'm going to do a video on the Korg Module Pro next. That app also got updated, and that has AUV3, which is huge news for anyone that owns it and anyone that does their music making in something like Cubasis 3 or Beatmaker 3 or Nano Studio, any of those types that take AUV3. Uh, that's a, that's a very big deal because now you don't have to like purchase their sounds that are in the sound store of those specific apps. You can use what you already have. And when I say Korg module has a ton of stuff, they, they like great, great, great sounding stuff. You'll, you'll be surprised. So I'll do a video on that next, but thank you guys so much for joining. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, feel free to leave a like and a comment. Let me know if you use the app and if this video is helpful and subscribe to the channel if this is your first time here. Uh, I do a lot of videos like this and a lot of other stuff too as I'm starting to just really do whatever my mind and my creative mind kind of, you know, goes towards and I'm having a blast with it. So hope you're all having a great day. Have a great rest of the day and I will catch you guys next time. All right. Later.